Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks, and today we've got another awesome vise in the shop I'm excited about. And I'm gonna tell you, when I started taking this vise apart, and I haven't taken this one apart, this is the one I've just purchased. I've got one here in front of us that is the one he brought back from Kansas. And that one there is, when I started taking it apart, I was shocked how, um, just the quality of the build is pretty amazing. And I'm gonna give you at least, at least seven reasons why I think the design of this craftsman was quite possibly the most um, elaborate and um, highest quality design of any vice made that I'm aware of. And Advice, guys. An old Craftsman model 05196, and you can find that model number on here. We'll show you that in a little bit. Just kind of giving you a once over on the vice, let you look at it beforehand. Get a look at our jaws. And you can get a look here right in the center, and I'm pretty sure that thing has been broken. Now that is not a braze. That may be a nickel weld. Uh, nickel uh, rod weld is what it looks like to me. So you can see it's got some really elaborate design on it. And then here is the vise that my son-in-law brought. You can see his was broken there but it's also broken right here. Now, did that happen first? And then because of that being broke, it put strain on that? I, I don't know. Okay, let's take this thing apart. Been wire wheeling everything so you can see the results of that. Everything's kind of cleaning up nice. And then I did do a little grinding and sanding on this as well as this. And I want to show you something that I found. Now this is the this is the broken vise, the one that my son-in-law Jared brought from Kansas. It had this broken uh, dynamic jaw. And, and I had been told that on these vices you could find the date on the slide. So as I was cleaning this one up, 
I found 758, so July of 1958. I thought that was pretty awesome. And then on this vise, this is the one that was broken, uh, March of 55. Also, just a quick peek at the jaws here, guys. So I went ahead and cleaned up the jaws. They were pretty pretty bad. I mean, these, these jaws were terrible. The ones on the older vise actually are in pretty good condition. I had to clean up the top side of them, but still, these are in pretty good shape. So these are the ones I'm gonna use, and then we'll just keep these other jaws as a backup. All right, guys, I think it's it's time to go over why I think this is one of the highest quality designed vices ever. And I don't mean that um, that I believe that this is the best vice ever made. That's important um, for you to understand. But I think they made an attempt to make the best production vice ever. At least of all the vices I've seen, this vice has so many options that really kind of put it ahead in its design. And so one of the first things I'll, I'll mention is number one, the, um, the style of the vise. So, and this is a little bit oily, I've got boiled linseed oil on right now, but if you look at this lead screw even, the way they design the finials on the end, the way they design the, the large finial on the end of the lead screw. I don't like to call them meatballs. Guys call them meatballs. I just think that's the stupidest thing. So I'm not gonna call it that. Um, but you see the styling, it's got grooves in it. It's tapered. So it has a taper to it. Um, you know, they did a lot just in the styling. If you look at the styling on the, um, on the vise itself, you know, this thing looks kind of race car-ish, you know. It really looks like it's, it was, they meant to design it in a way that looked flashy and attractive. And I think they did a good job. If you look at the, the nut finial, uh, it's kind of the same situation where that, that nut finial is, you know, got a taper to it. It's got three stripes that are milled into it. Um, really, really good. It, when, when the bar recesses, it recesses into it. I mean, just really high quality stuff. So I think that's maybe the first reason why I would say, um, because some vices are made and they're just very utilitarian and they're not, they don't have any style to them at all. This is not one of those vices. Um, the threaded retaining collar ring. So that was one of the first things in taking this apart that I, I noticed. And I've never seen this in another vice. But this little collar is threaded. And normally those collars are what go in and they retain the, the lead screw. In this case, this is the same way and they'll use a set screw, which this has got, but this one actually screws into the vise. So let me just show you. So that retaining collar actually threads onto the vise. Pretty amazing, really. Now these are not square cut screws or these are not square cut threads. They have a little bit of a taper, so I believe that would be called an Acme. Again, high quality. The advantage to this collar screwing on is that you can take out nearly every bit of backlash that this lead screw might have in it. So that's pretty important if a guy's looking for something really, really precise. And that's exactly what that will allow you to do is to take that backlash out of it so that when that 
um, when that lead screw is engaged, it, it immediately engages the slide and the jaw of the vise. So pretty high quality right there. Number three, and I've got these written on my board, so that's why I'm looking to the left here. Um, so adjustable lead nut retainer. So this is an interesting thing. So so your this is your lead screw nut, okay? And most of these lead screw nuts go in, and then they you 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 run a small pin in a hole right here, and that kind of keeps that lead screw nut from being able to go in and out. This vise uses an adjustable retaining screw for the actual lead screw. So what this does is this goes in the vise like that. This nut goes in the vise and then this, which is has a screw on it, goes in and down, and then you simply tighten this screw up and it locks that lead or that lead screw nut in place. Pretty high quality. A simple pin for most manufacturers, or something like this that allows for extremely um, precision adjustments. So pretty high quality. That's a lot more expensive to manufacture than a simple steel pin would be. While we're talking about the lead screw nut, let's talk about the little slit in it. Slit in it and it's got this nut, or I'm sorry, this little screw. And so what that screw does is that screw pulls in on that little, where the slit is at, and that will actually take up any of your slop in your lead screw. So once again, if your lead screw has a little bit of, of movement in the nut itself, in other words, the, the threads aren't perfectly cut into the nut, this here could take that extra slop or backlash in the actual screw itself out. So again, that takes a lot more to manufacture that than just a simple nut. So I think that's number, what, number four or number five? This geared, geared base for the swivel. I'm gonna try to sh do my best to show you this and I'll probably give you a couple angles on this. But this, this is what our swivel nut screws onto. It goes into the base. Now I want you to see, I want you to see those little geared looking things in there. That comes up through this. And then that inside this vise has those exact same gears that this thing locks into. And I'm telling you, once you lock that thing in, it's going nowhere. There is not gonna be any slipping through those gears. Those are big, heavy gears. And for that reason, it's just not going to move. I mean, those are big, heavy gears. I hope you can see that. So again, they were trying to make this thing very, very high quality, high precision. So that was number five. Um, number six, this base and this swivel nut notice the taper on that swivel nut that has a that has a countersink right into the base of that vise that just allows that thing to slide in there there is no movement it doesn't sit on top of your painted surface it's a machine surface on top of a machine surface that's a lot of extra work when building this vise, and yet they did it. Okay, and number seven, the seventh reason I think this is the most highly, high quality design um, in a vise that I've ever seen is, and, and you see this in other vices as well, particularly the older vices, but it's so overbuilt. That base, 
That base must weigh 15 pounds, maybe 20 pounds. I don't know. It's heavy. It's extremely heavy. It's at least five eighths to three quarter inch thick. I mean, it's ridiculous. Super heavy, super solid. Same with the body of the vise. Super heavy, very, very solid, very, very rugged, very well built. Everything was, was really heavily built. The jaws are nice and thick. It does, they don't cheap out on you. I mean, the size of that screw, I think that was one and uh, five sixteenths um, for the base screw. Extremely high quality build. Now, after saying all of that, and I think this is a great vice. I would have never gone out and bought another vice um, like my, my, like my son-in-law had brought to me if I didn't see so much quality in it. But in saying that, I do think it has a flaw. And it, maybe it's a fatal flaw. And this is where I need some of you guys to kind of chime in here. In the dynamic jaw, mine has a weld all across it. And I don't know how well you can see on the base here, but you can see the weld clearly. Now it's a nice thick weld, and I'm certain they've used nickel rod on that because it's not a braze, and um, and it looks very well done. And this will probably last a lifetime. Realistically, it was repaired really, really well. But the other vice that Jared, my son-in-law, brought to me had the exact same failure. I don't think that was part of the design, obviously, a weakness in it. And it could have been just a weakness in the casting. And maybe I've gotten unlucky and just found a couple like that that had the break in the slide and one on the, the body of the vise. But I suspect that that's something that's uh, more common in these vices. But I don't know that for sure. That's pretty thin right there. And so maybe that caused a weakness in the design. I don't know. Either way, I think there is probably just a weakness in the, in the design of this vise that they just didn't realize, obviously. Because they, it's pretty evident and very clear to me that they went out of their way to make a very, very high quality vise. And I think they achieved that. But I think if you, if you overuse this or misuse it, abuse it, which a lot of us do with our vices, we abuse them, right? In that circumstance, I think you've, you run the risk of breaking your dynamic jaw. So anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments of what you think about that. Now, it's time to put this vice back together.